What's up everybody, T Wolves 2016 here uh, with another video. This is going to be a two-parter because I am going to cover some hockey news as well as some other things going around in the baseball and other uh, other world. Um, I did just want to make another video because uh, I do have another jersey opening. I got this jersey today. It is my uh, Arizona Coyotes, not my Phoenix Coyotes. It's an Arizona Coyotes jersey. It's Oliver Ekman Larson, and I want to know: Do you guys have the same issue with your um, OEL jerseys where the uh, nameplate on the back actually? Hold on. Sorry, everybody. I'm back. I just felt like it was easier for me to do this than rather rather than try to explain it. Does anyone else have the issue where the nameplate on the back? Now I get it. He has a long last name, but if you can see, you can probably see it pretty clearly actually. The corners of each, I think it's more so on this side. Yeah, on this side, the it looks like the at least the solid corner is just not on there. So I don't know. Is it does everyone have that issue, or is it just this? Uh, is it just this jersey? I um I do want to say. Oh, sorry. Catch me with my messed up hair. Um. I got this jersey from um, someone on the Reddit community hockey jerseys, and so I'm not saying anything bad about him whatsoever, but I did want to just let you know this is not an NHL shop or full moon jerseys thing, so if you are using these, um, if you are using uh, those guys, sorry, I'm pulling up something on my phone so I can really talk about um, what's going on so either way that being said um, I just wanted to bring that up again like I, I know I'm all over the place but a big thing is I just didn't want you guys to you know even though there's only like five or six of you guys I didn't want you to uh, you know I didn't want you to do that so either way that being said moving on we have a jersey opening, and I'm only doing this jersey opening because this is one of my favorite players of all time. Um, and it's a team that I really wanted. It's ironically enough the team I said was going to be my only Adidas jersey I ever got. And that kind of gives it away. But um, I ended up finding two Adidas jerseys really, really cheap. Uh, my Taylor Terravine and Carolina Hurricanes and my Pecorine Nashville Predators. I I'm in love with both of them. This one... I bought off of NHL shop. I could not, for the life of me, um, find a cheap um, place to buy this jersey. So I, I just kind of spoiled myself. Once I got paid from work, I decided to go to NHL shop, and I did that. So needless to say, moving on, we have the package open. Here we go. We are going to open up a team that is debuting. Hey, look at that. I get a... You know, I get a code for $10 off of a purchase, $50 or more. And then they have the details back here. Um, but as you guys can probably already guess, this is a uh, jersey of a play of a team and player I do not have yet in my collection, but I guess I do now. Um, he is a forward, and he plays for a team that made a lot of history this upcoming season not only was it and i'm going to just spoil it right now not only was it their inaugural season but this team made it to the stanley cup finals yes ladies and gentlemen i am talking and this is going to make um uh, louis over there at vegas golden knights coverage really happy i finally have a las vegas golden knights jersey and who else would it be but one of my favorite players, Wild Bill William Carlson, good old number 71. So I'm going to pause the video. I'm going to throw this absolute beaut of a jersey on, and then we will get to the hockey coverage part of this video. So what's up, everybody? I'm back. I'm wearing this beaut of a jersey with this beaut of a human being on it, and I could not be happier with this jersey. Um, I did have the opportunity today because I went shopping at a mall to see a Fanatics version of a jersey I don't own, but just to see a Fanatics jersey in real life. And I don't like how they look. I'm just being honest. This is just my opinion. I'm not here to, if anyone likes Fanatics jerseys, I'm not here to tell you you can't like it. But 
I don't like the Fanatics jerseys. I really don't. Um, they look, and I don't want to say cheap, but they don't look like the Authentics is, I guess, the best way of saying it, the best way of saying it without pretty much calling them cheap. Um, so I'm really a big fan of this. Um, I thought about getting an Adidas, uh, or a uh, Fanatics version of it rather than the Adidas, but I figured if I'm going to go with the expansion team and a player, player I really want, I'd rather leave no doubt in my mind about the team and the qual and the jersey I'm getting. I'd rather have, because I have two Adidas jerseys and I love the quality of them, I'd rather have the jersey with me. That being said, Vegas is probably one of my top three favorite teams. And again, I know I'm probably jumping on the bandwagon, but any of my friends know that from the beginning of the season, it's been Chicago, Nashville, and Vegas. You know, obviously all Western Conference teams. I only like, really, I've really only ever rooted for the um, Washington Nationals because of Ovi. So I don't really like them as a team, but I do like Ovi. But again, that's a video for a different time and a topic for a different time. That being said, we will move on to the hockey coverage part of this. So I um, I am sorry if you uh, don't like the jersey openings. I know this will probably be one of the last jersey openings. I know I have a few more jerseys showing up, but I probably won't do those jersey openings on camera because I know that they're not the most popular things. But I hope this one is a little bit better because I will at least be doing a um, some coverage. I'm sorry. I just can't get over how nice these jerseys look. Like... The gold on them is so great, and if you can see it, it's got a little embroidery uh, on the black that you can't see from a distance, and that's actually on the jerseys that are on the ice, and I just think that's really cool. The shoulder patches, these uh, fake holes that are kind of shining through, as you can see them, kind of looks a little glittery. It's not really glittery in person, and then the shiny NHL logo on the chest is what I'm a big fan of. That being said, Ron, again, I do have these on my phone, so we will be... I will be looking off screen just a little bit to kind of figure it out. Jerome Aginla retires. And again, there hasn't been a lot happening. So I do kind of just, you know, get, I, I take what I can. You know, you, you, you be, beggars can't be choosers in this instance. And so I'm not getting too picky as to what I'm going to uh, look at. Uh, Jerome Aginla retires. I do have his uh, stats right here. Um, 1,554 games split between the Flames, Pens, Bruins, Avs, and Kings. Scored 625 goals and, 700, and 675 assists for a grand total of a nice round even number, 1,300 career points. He falls a couple hundred points of being a career point for a uh, game player. But then again, a career point per game player is very, very hard to do. That being said, um, Jerome Aguila kind of fell off in the last bit of his career from at least what I got to see. Sorry, I was messing. Um, Jerome Aguila kind of fell off in the back part of his career from what I was at least watching. Um, and I fell out of hockey for a little bit. Um, in the, uh, I became a Hawks fan in the mid-2000s. And just watching the Hawks, you know, the Hawks were doing well near the late, especially at the end of the uh, 2000s and going into 2010 and in, into the early and mid to 2010s but the Hawks were just not you know with the lockout especially and everything it just kind of made it hard for me to watch hockey especially because it wasn't you know I didn't like the home team and you know I'm, I was born and raised about 40 miles outside of St. Louis so but I didn't like the Blues and so it made it hard to follow hockey because if you the only team around is a team you don't like and a rival team at that it kind of makes it hard because my best friend moved away and I'd always watch Chicago sports with him and he had he paid extra for a package that included Chicago sports I was not willing to do that and so it's just kind of how it is but you know that's how it goes uh, Jerome McGinley retiring going back to it um, he really looked like he died off at the bad part of his career um, this is kind of an ed inevitable thing. I thought he was going to retire last year. Uh, he did stay one more year, and I, you know, I'm, I'm not here to say who can or can't retire. I'm, I think he did have a bit of a lackluster season this last season, and that him retiring now is probably good for his career because those point totals and everything they're just going to keep going down, and he's. I just think it benefits him more. 
I think Jerome McGinley has a case, and again, I, I'm going to say this about everyone because I look for the good in people. I think Jerome McGinley does have a case for making the Hall of Fame. Um, do I think he gets in? Maybe. I mean, I think the Hall of Fame, and it's and in fairness, um, you know, I mean this with the most upro- utmost respect to all the players in the Hall of Fame. I do believe the Hall of Fame is a little bit lackluster on how they uh, define who goes in. Uh, I do think there are some, in my opinion at least, there are some head scratchers in the Hall of Fame that I will not get into right now. Um, what I will, I will get into that in a future video if you guys are interested in something like that. But that being said, let's move on because I've talked about Jerome Ginla for far too long. The Nashville Predators signed Dan Hamuse. Um, Dan Hamuse was a free agent on the market, probably a little bit longer than most people thought, but he's also kind of buried in the idea. He was also kind of buried in the prospect pool, or not the prospect pool, but the uh, the pool of free agents. As you had big names like John Tavares, JT, you had JVR, you had you know, you had big names in free agency, and it made it very hard. And also big trades. Um, you know, with the Blues com- acquiring O'Reilly and Galchenyuk getting sent from Montreal to Arizona, um, you know, you, you run into this, you know, he kind of gets buried in that idea. He is a, uh, they sign him to a two year, two and a half million dollar contract with an annual average value or an AAV of 1.25 mil. I think that's good for Hamus. I think having Hamus really solidifies their top six with um you have i i always blank on these guys and i don't know why you have yossi suban ekholm ellis Irwin, and now dan hamus i think that gives them one of if not the best top six in the entire league uh you also have yannick weber in there who can play as a seventh d man and i really like him as a seventh d man i think there's, uh, I think there are certain players who really exemplify positions that aren't normally talked about, like Antti Ranta and Scott Darling. I do believe were they, perf- they, you know, really made the idea pop of the career backups. You know, these back, these guys who are very good, you know, in relief of starters, but never really, you know, in my opinion, at least starting material. Now, again, this is just one guy's opinion, and you can completely, completely disagree with me, and I'm okay with that. You know, that's why I enjoy making these videos. If it if it, if it sparks some form of conversation, that's what it is. We're going to only touch on a couple more because this is getting a little bit longer. Brooks Orpik, these next stories will probably be a little short. Brooks Orpik re-signs with the Capitals in a move that really doesn't surprise a whole lot of people. Brooks Orpik was in the deal that sent Philip Grubeyer to the Colorado Avalanche as a way of a la- of, of uh, a cap dump, and then Dan ha- and then Brooks Orpik was cut from Colorado, in the with the idea being that he'd re-sign in Washington for a lower amount to help out to help make room for the John Carlsons and other guys of the team. Tom Wilson inks a six-year deal. I do remember. Um, the Air, uh, the Anaheim Ducks have um, released a new their third jersey, which a lot of people have. Philadelphia has, Carolina has, and a lot of people are going with the idea of a black third jersey, which I do like. I don't think Vegas will unveil a third jersey. I just can't imagine a third jersey that looks good with Vegas's colors. I'm really praying that they don't make it red. Um, just because red is such a minor color, I do like the red on the jerseys, and I will probably go over my jerseys and what I like about the jerseys and what I feel like, what jerseys I don't like design-wise and how I could improve them, because I'm a smartass. Uh, <laughs> I mean, heck, the shirt I'm wearing underneath this says that my level of sarcasm depends on your level of stupidity. Got it at Spencer's earlier today. They're not paying me anything. No one's paying me anything because, you know, I'm not a big deal. But, you know, if you like ironic and sarcastic t-shirts, they have a lot of them. They use, they do have a decent amount of t-shirts on sale as well, so there's that. 
Um, the Anaheim Ducks released their jersey to some form of controversy as Sharks fans are the first ones to point out that it does look like a Sharks jersey that the Sharks have had in the past, but it also looks like a jersey the Anaheim Ducks have had in the past when they were called the Mighty Ducks of Anaheim. So to each his own, I don't really care. I will not be getting the jersey because after this jersey, I am more than likely done buying Adidas jerseys unless I see a really good deal on eBay or on hockey jerseys, the um, Reddit community, even though I'll probably buy from the Reddit community more often than eBay because the Reddit community has a little bit better way of policing sell the selling of counterfeit jerseys is that like they don't accept it at all. So I like that. Um, the Coyotes acquire um, Marion Hosa in a cap dump by Chicago. The, is, the part I don't like about this deal is how they lost... Um, Vinny Henestrosa and defenseman Jordan Osterley. Um, Osterley was all right. I mean, he didn't really wow anyone with his numbers, but Henestrosa hurts. Henestrosa was really solid down the middle for Chicago, and I think losing him kind of makes this deal not worth it in what they're getting back from the Coyotes, even though it is a cap dump. Um, if you think about it, I think I saw something about how people were complaining about t dynasties, and the Coyotes now have... Um, Pavel Datsuk, Marion Hosa, and Chris Pronger all on con on contracts currently because other teams have dumped their salaries to the Arizona Coyotes. I just find that funny. Um, Hellebuck gets an extension. The Blues sign Patrick Maroon. Uh, that's a great homecoming for him. I know he got really emotional when he was able to score a goal in his hometown. I think it's really cool for him to come. I can be happy for the emotional moments even if I don't root for the teams they're about. Uh, Connor Hellbuck getting the extension, not really a surprise. Uh, Winnipeg really wanted to uh, keep their uh, Vesna candidate goalie, and I don't blame him. I mean, that's a great – he had a great season, and he doesn't really show signs of regressing. I mean, there's always going to probably be a bit of a drop-off this season, but I guess, you know, I could be wrong in a year's time, so who cares? And this video then exists for the sole purpose of pointing at me and laughing at me and go, ha-ha, he was wrong. Um in a more sad note, Razor Ray Emery did pass away. Um, I know this happened about, this happened over a week ago. Um, it happened, it happened over a week ago, but almost two weeks ago actually. But again, I haven't made video in that time, so it's fair game for this video. Um, Ray Emery passing away is something that does kind of make me sad. He was on the Chicago Blackhawks when they won the 2013 Stanley Cup. I was, um, I've always liked and respected Ray Emery because he, um, he really exemplified the physical aspect of what a goalie would be. He kind of reminded me of Patrick Waugh, but again, in fairness to him and with the most upright and with the utmost respect to him as a hockey goalie, I don't think he ever really truly had like, you know, true Vesna candidacy goaltending. But he was very physical goaltender, so people just didn't mess with him, and I thought that was pretty interesting. Um, um, on the hockey uh, references page, they don't reference Emery as a 2013 Stanley Cup champion. And that does bug me a little bit, and I think it might just be, um, and I'm not 100% sure why, but that's just me. I'm not here to tell them anything. I'm just, you know, I think it's a little odd. And then the final bit of news because, uh, well, uh, Alex Burroughs retires. Uh, the Maple Leafs sign Ennis. The, Lightning, the Lightning's Nick Kucherov signs an extension. Shea Weber is out for five to six months. Jared Bull retires. The Hurricanes sign Calvin DeHaan. And finally, because it is the jersey I am wearing, we will end this video this probably longer video than you want to watch and i apologize for that but the mark andre Fleury show in vegas goes on in a move that surprises all of well nobody if you even had a that much hockey knowledge um vegas it's not inherently surprising that they sign uh andre Fleury. uh he signs a three-year extension worth 21 million dollars with a seven point with a seven million dollar aav or annual average annual value um i definitely think mark andre Fleury is deserving of this contract and i think this is a way of them kind of ensuring that they have flurry because 
Fleury is a very good goaltender, and he showed how good of a goaltender he was in, in the playoffs, well, at least up until the finals, and then that was just a whole different bear. Um, he's 33 right now, I believe. Um, he was a phenomenal for Vegas, and I do believe he will play, be good for at least one to two years of this contract. The third year of his contract, I feel he will be a backup goaltender for Vegas, um, with Vegas having picked a starter by then hopefully that's the one thing about vegas i've always i'm kind of iffy about they do have a decent amount of young guys like william carlson on the offensive side riley smith jonathan marshall so and you have a very you have some guys like nate schmidt and others who are good defensively so you have pieces in place to set and you also have a ton of prospects so you have a lot of stuff in place to be able to build for the future. The one position I feel like they're absolutely weakest, and I know I will be hearing a lot of this from a lot of fans, but their goaltending. Even though their goaltending performed phenomenally with all the injuries that happened, I still don't think Vegas' goaltending ranks in the top three or five of the league for depth purposes. I think Marc-Andre Fleury is an amazing goaltender, and Marc-Andre Fleury is still performing like a top-five goaltender, but they don't really have a lot of good people to back him up. They have Malcolm Subban, they have Maxime Legacy, Oscar Dansk, the um, really young kid who got to play earlier in the year because he, um, because everyone else was hurt. You know, all of them had great short stints, but I just don't feel like we have enough, you know enough you know time to look at these prospects or look at these goalies and say this is a definite candidate to replace Fleury I think Malcolm Subban's a great goaltender I don't think he is a Marc-Andre Fleury replacement level goaltender I don't think that he um you know I can see him being a starter in Vegas but you will need a starter to back him up because I don't believe, and I mean, again, most the utmost respect to Ma Malcolm Subban. I do really like Malcolm Subban as a goalie. I just don't think he can carry a team like Marc Andre Fleury carried his team through the playoffs on the way to the Stanley Cup final defeat to the Washington Capitals. Excuse me. That being said, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate all the views I get. Um, I know that this is probably not going to get a lot of views because you'll see, oh, it's a jersey opening, but this is uh, this is going to be my episode of my, the, the you know, this week or so in hockey, even though it's like two weeks, two, three weeks maybe. I've just been super busy, like I said, in the description of the last video I uploaded. I'm, I am sorry about that. I've just been so crazy hectic i've been packing for college i've been working i've been helping my parents out i've been working and racing on my i've been working on my car and racing it on racetracks not on streets um so excuse me sorry um so either way it's it's one of those things that i just i'm sorry but i really can't do anything about it i will try to continue to make videos while i'm at college but i cannot promise i will um i gotta i really gotta focus on college um not because I really haven't been, but just because I need to, you know, that's why I'm dropping racing. That's why I'm dropping other things. That's why I'm dropping some of the athletics I was doing. I need to focus on college and getting an education and graduating, and then I, maybe then I can really focus on moving on from there. That being said, thank you for sticking around if you've watched this entire video. I know it's a long video. I, you know, in thinking about it now, I probably should have just done the jersey opening and then done the news in a separate video. But I figured, you know, this video wasn't going to be that long. I apparently was wrong, and I do apologize for that. Um, I have been at, I've had had the chance to try the new NHL 19 beta. The ones mode is a lot of fun. I have not played EASHL yet, and I'm really hoping to do that tonight if I'm not caught up watching, you know, TV show, because uh, I did buy The, uh, the Last Airbender. Uh, the entire the all you know the entire series uh, on uh, DVD for Walmart for like thirty bucks and I was so happy about that. But that being said, thank you so much for watching. If you're new to the channel, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. And um, I just thank you so much for all the views I get, even though it's really not that many. I don't think I have a hundred total views. I might actually. I think one of my videos hit a hundred. 
not 100 percent sure but either way um thank you so much for watching i hope you enjoyed the video if you did again remember to like and subscribe and stay tuned for more content because i will try to put out more content before i go out to college i will try to put out as much content before i go to college as i can because you know i i, I do genuinely enjoy doing this that being said have a great day peace